Welcome everyone. My name is Dan Jarms and this is Faith Matters. What we're doing on Faith Matters, a new podcast by Faith Bible Church, is talking about matters of the Christian faith and matters for Faith Bible Church, our own church. With me in the studio is Seth Weber. Hello. Uh, we want to be able to help and serve the church, help you know what's going on in the church, as well as interact with some key topics. Today, we are going to hear from um, our new youth pastor, Ian Rush, who's also helping me in the Master's Seminary. And we're going to get a little preview of the this week's sermon from Brian Sayers. Also, there's going to be a little tribute to Jess Colvin from some of the office staff. All right, before we get to our interview with Ian Rush, let's take a look at some announcements. So... Um, we wanted to let our youth families, which is now 6th through 12th grade, we wanted to let them know that the youth retreat is coming up at the end of this month. It's going to be July 30th through August 1st. And um, the format's going to be a little different this year because they couldn't book any of the camps. They're all sort of, they were closed for COVID and then they opened back up and everyone booked them all. And so we couldn't get a camp. Pace so this out. Yep. <laughs> so it's going to be a retreat. They're going to they're gonna be um, here at the church for the sessions and kind of just hanging out. And then... Um, some host families have volunteered to host um, some groups. Of, it'll be sort of broken down by gender and, and age um, being hosted in, in different uh, families by the church. So it's going to be really fun. Finally, yeah. finally, youth can do some activities Yes, and be together, be discipled. Uh, yeah, it's going to be great. Yes, yeah, really cool. And Ian Rush, Paul Funches, and Paul Beausoleil will be speaking. So that'll be really okay. cool. Um, so if you, if you are a 6th through 12th grader or the parent of a 6th through 12th grader, sign up um, at fbchurch.org slash retreat. And if you sign up by July 12th, you'll save $10 on the registration. So make there sure you go. get registered by July 12th. Um, the other thing that we've got coming up, uh, this is next Sunday, July 11th, is um, Walt Takasaki and Toby Rainbow will be doing another one of their perspectives on work seminars. And this Great. one's going to be on sort of different um, difficulties and and challenges that might come up in the workplace and how to deal with those in a Christ-like way. Um, so you can learn more and register at fbchurch.org slash work. Last, uh, n- again, this is also next Sunday, um, following both services, we're going to have a, re- uh, a reception honoring Jess Colvin um, and just sort of giving you as a church a time to thank him. Yeah, 18, 18 years of service and yeah. work for Faith Bible Church. Yeah. Yeah, some great things to say about that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you'll hear more about that later in, in today's podcast as we, you know, do our do our own little tribute to Jess. Let me frame uh, Faith Bible Church's convictions about investments in students and families. In Psalm 78, Asaph, who is one of the great songwriters uh, under King David, writes this psalm. And he, he says this, I will open my mouth in a parable and I will utter dark sayings from of old. This was like deep wisdom. The mm. dark sayings meant like heavy wisdom, important stuff. Mm. Things that we have heard and known that our fathers have told us, we will not hide them from their children, but tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and his wonders that he has done. Psalm 78 verse 7 says, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. So the aim here, here's Asaph, uh, part of the priestly organization Mm -hmm. under King David, and he wanted the next generation to know the Lord, know the works of the Lord, know the, the covenant of the Lord, and then to put their hope in him. So our task as a church is to come alongside families and teach what families teach to their kids when it comes to the important truths about God and disciple kids. So we, youth ministry does that, children's ministry does that, family ministry as a whole focuses on the parents, and we all work together to do this. So I love 
I love Asaph's call as sort of the lead priest in the Old Testament system to say, we have to pass these truths on to the next generation. So they put their hope in the right place. Yeah, that's really cool to see the biblical basis yeah. of that there. I would say just one other thing. You, you mentioned it a little bit, but I think we need to acknowledge or maybe say it here because a lot of people who don't have children in junior high may not know this. We have moved our sixth grade into the youth ministry side. They've moved up the s- districts, number of the schools are moving that way anyway. So mm-hmm. we're moving our sixth graders up. But we are in a plan that by the fall, we hope to have breakout time for sixth through eighth grade. And one of our seminary students, members of our church, Paul Beausoleil, is going to be helping head that up, working under Ian. And uh, it's really exciting to have Paul taking a little bit more responsibility, teaching a little bit more. So anyway, fun things are happening. Things that we have longed to have happen for years Mm -hmm. are coming out. And so hope you enjoy the, the interview with Ian. You get to know him and his family a little bit better. Today we have a, a special treat in that we've got Ian Rush in the studio. Say hey, Ian. Hello. Hello. Ian is here. Ian is our new youth and seminary guy. He's a youth pastor and is helping me. We're going to partner in the seminary. And I thought it would be really fun for the church to get a little bit of background on the Rushes. They have been you know, not part of the everyday life of Faith Bible Church for six years, five, six years because of seminary and and time in England. So some of us who've been around a bit know you already, but those who don't might like to get caught up. So we're glad to introduce Ian Rush and you can get to know him and his family a little bit. So welcome, welcome aboard. We are really glad to have you here. Thank you. Super excited to be here. Uh, why don't you start with giving us the, the Rush basics? So married, kids, ages, uh, give us the basics. Yeah, so we've uh, we've been married for, it'll be 14 years, just in a couple of weeks. So uh, my wife is Claire. Um, a lot of a lot of people here will know her, a lot won't. So uh, please do come and meet us as you, uh, as you see us on Sundays or other days. Uh, we've got five kids. Uh, Camden is our oldest, so he's he just turned 11. Um, and then we have Daisy, who is nine. Uh, Jasper is seven. Uh, we have Hugo, who is four, and then Esme, who is three. We uh, enjoyed dinner with the whole family the other night, and it was such a delight to be able to spend time with you and your family and your kids, and they're super engaging <laughs> kids, so it, it's really fun. You're going to get to enjoy the Rush family. Um, other really important things, what's your favorite football team? Okay, that is very important. So. At the moment, my favorite football team is England because that's the Euros are going on at the moment. Oh, yeah. So they actually, at this very moment in time, are playing against the Czech Republic. Oh. They're winning 1-0. Go England. Good, good to know. Yeah, good to um, know. Re- usually my favorite football team is Liverpool. They had a good season, won the league for the first time in 30 years, two seasons ago. Last season wasn't as good, still pretty good though. So right. Liverpool, Liverpool man. Are you going to be able to get some either replay games or live games? Uh, yeah, you know, it's actually easier to watch live games over here because no one likes it. So it's not expensive to watch on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and then what's your favorite curry? Favorite curry. Um, I do like, I like a tikka, chicken tikka masala. Mm-hmm. Um, those are good. When I used to live at home with my dad and my brother, there were occasions where my dad would make a vindaloo um, and he would overdo it with the spices and uh, it was it was barely eatable but it was oh. it was always it was one of those ones where it was a kind of a like it was just a funny experience to have because you couldn't really finish it <laughs> and it was so <laughs> spicy but uh, yeah so it, it, it wasn't necessarily my favorite curry but yeah. it was kind of a, it's kind of a fun memory <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. why don't you tell us a little bit about your testimony how did you come to trust trust christ so I grew up in the southwest of England, so uh, near the city of Plymouth, a little town called Ivy Bridge. Um, my family are not believers. They weren't believers then, and, and they're not now. Um, so I grew up uh, in, in a, a home without Christians in it, without the Bible, without church, without any of those things. Uh, as a teenager, my friends invited me to come along to youth ministry mm. um, at a local Baptist church. Okay. Um, so. I resisted for probably more than a year, didn't mm. want to come, went 
found a new group of friends to hang out with because <laughs> I didn't just didn't have any interest at all. Thought it was thought it was weird, um, but uh, in the end, my friends they convinced me. Um, really out of uh really it was the fun that drew me in um i wanted to hang out with my friends and they told me about all of the uh the exciting things that they did on a on a friday night at the youth group mm. and uh the pastor was the one who who led the youth group he was a church planting pastor mm -hmm. um he did a little bit of everything in the church and he would share the gospel for about uh 15 minutes half an hour mm -hmm. every friday night right at the end wow. um so I, I heard the gospel for the first time and friends would actually follow up with me and ask me questions, ask me mm. what I thought about the, the messages and what I heard. And um, really it was through that, through that whole process that, that the Lord uh, saved me, mm. brought me to himself, revealed my sin. And, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah what, what, what was that point where you knew you were a sinner, needed need a savior do you remember that time uh yeah i was about i, I don't remember like an exact point in time mm -hmm. um but it was somewhere i was somewhere between like 16 and 18 mm -hmm. um but there, there i remember a few instances where i heard the gospel and i remember a few specific conversations that i had with people mm -hmm. where um i was definitely showing like positive fruit of of, of being a believer mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm not sure the exact point in time yeah. there, but it's somewhere in those those years well we would say ours our high school years yeah 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 yep. that's great yep. uh, where did you and Claire meet uh, so yeah so this kind of follows on from uh, from those high school years then so I was I was involved actually in a uh, in a parachurch organization in the UK which is based in the US um, so they've got like various youth ministry things across the world um, and I actually was given the opportunity to attend their Bible Institute, which was in upstate New York. Um, and I was there for two years and Claire just about overlapped the last quarter of my second year. Um, so we met there. We met actually playing uh, Ultimate Frisbee. Hmm. Well, you know what? I was playing Ultimate Frisbee with my friends. And, and she was marveling. The dean. No, she was marveling at no, your athleticism. No, no, she she definitely did not marvel. <laughs> <laughs> there was some convincing that needed to be done. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but the dean of students had encouraged the existing students to welcome in the new freshmen. So I was just doing my my task of, of welcoming. Yes. So I invited her to come and play, and mm -hmm. uh, it kind of led on from there. Okay. So. What interested you and Claire, because I think she's got a real ministry heart too, to serve in the church, to serve in full-time ministry? It, it really, it's a mixture of things. Some of it was just seeing uh, over in the UK, the churches that, that we were at initially, um, just seeing the need that they had. Um, there's, there's not a lot of people that are willing to serve within the church. Um, and obviously there are great great needs within the church to serve the people that are there um, and then there are great needs outside of the church as well with with reaching out with the gospel mm. um, so really we just wanted to wanted to be used however however the lord and the church could use us um, so we kind of jumped in at the deep end there with with serving in ministry uh, didn't i mean we'd both been to the bible school but that was kind of a a broad like overview of the bible and mm -hmm. and, and basic theology in the mm -hmm. classes um so there wasn't really any training for ministry so after that we kind of just jumped in at the deep end and um just started serving in ministry yeah yeah and and really it's just seeing the needs and mm -hmm. and, and understanding that there are lost people out there that need to hear the truth and mm -hmm. there are believers within churches that we want to just come along Alongside and and we want to we want to walk with them and grow together. What what uh, moved you to wanting greater training in ministry? Mm. As we were more involved in ministry in the churches in the UK, it, it quickly became apparent to me that I wasn't really equipped to do the things that um, I was being asked to do and that really I wanted to do. Um, so I was having conversations with Isaiah Macklow, who was the the youth pastor here at mm -hmm. that point in time so that was 11 years ago mm -hmm. um and uh yeah he 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 recommended coming to fbc in spokane and, and said there's an equipping ministry here we can help you figure out if if mini full-time ministry is the right direction for you um we've got elders here who will meet with you and and train you and um and just help you in that direction if if that is the right direction um yeah so really it was a, a realization that i needed more and and for claire too um, and then also conversations with people that we trusted um, to help us figure out um what 
what the right steps were um, and what direction we should be going in. It, it's just thrilling to uh, to think of those conversations because Isaiah and I were working together. We'd go on walks and work through youth ministry things, and I remember him bringing you guys up in conversation. So we would talk about that, pray about that. So here, here you are. I mean, you you came and served, and now you've gotten your seminary seminary training and and all of that. And here you're you're serving with us. It's it's really fun to see. It's a joy to see how God answered prayers and moved you guys that way. So let's talk about um, more recent recent ministry. Since uh, Faith Bible Church uh, encouraged and sent you to TMSLA, what ministries have you been a part of during seminary time in the last couple of years? Yeah, so during seminary, um, I got plugged in with uh, Bill Shannon down there and his his growth group, and we served alongside uh, another seminary student who was there from Finland. Uh, we led one of the, mm. the house groups mm-hmm. down there together. Um, so that was that was where we were serving there. I also had opportunities once a month. I was preaching up at a, um, a rehab center up in the, the hills outside of uh, outside of LA as well. Mm. Um, so that was a really, a really sweet opportunity. Um, and then I, yeah, I worked in the bookstore there as well. That was a, uh, that was a, a good blessing for me as I was, as I was going through, going through seminary, enjoyed that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, post seminary, uh, we took the opportunity to move back to England. Um, and I was working with a church, uh, it, actually it was my home church, the one I, the one I got saved in, mm-hmm. uh, in Ivy Bridge. I was working alongside the pastor there as, as an associate for, uh, two years. Yeah. Yeah. So that just brought us up to the last September. Yeah. And then, um, you made, there was a transition there and you ended up up in rugby. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we moved to rugby, uh, really just to be, um, to be a part of a, there's a, another brother there who's, mm-hmm. who's planted a church, a TMS guy. Mm-hmm. Um, really wanted to just be a part of his church um, while we were figuring out what the what the next move was for us after we left the church in Ivy Bridge. Yeah, and you've had your your own challenging church life in lockdown there too. So we've all come out of pandemic year, and uh, we we whine a little bit about how hard it is here in in Spokane. But it was really locked down for you guys. Yeah. Like your church wasn't. How what did you guys do during that time? Yeah, there, there were times where you weren't even, there were kind of curfews, you couldn't go out in your car. Like the, if you were driving along the road, you had to have a, there were like police there that would ask you like where you were going and what you were doing and that kind of thing. That didn't go on for too long. Um, but we, the, the church um, didn't meet for a number of months. And then when we moved up to rugby, um, another issue that, that they had there at that church was it because it's a church plant, they don't yet have their own building. Mm-hmm. Um, the place they were renting wouldn't let anybody mm-hmm. meet in it. So they were kind of forced for over a year to, to do um, uh, the online live live meetings, which which was still great. And we just had to be creative with, with how we how we met people outside. And yeah. um, they had like, you weren't supposed to have people in your homes mm-hmm. and, and those types of things. So we would just kind of get creative with uh, with still spending time with people and, and mm-hmm. getting to encourage one another and things like that. Um, what are you gonna say to people when they say, I just love your accent? <laughs> uh, they, they should go to England on vacation. They just have a great time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little bit creepy here. I don't know. <laughs> I just get that out there so that um, everybody who's listening to the podcast can, like, of, Ian probably doesn't need to hear that 400 times. <laughs> you know what? I used to work, so when we lived in Spokane before, I worked in a call center. Yes. So for an, a, an Englishman in America, that is a an experience. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other personal things. What are your family's favorite things to do? Uh, yeah, we love. I mean, obviously, we just love spending time together, and we've done a lot of that through lockdown. We love like the kids are they're adventurous. They love being outdoors. Like in England, we would just go to the woods. They love like playing in rivers, playing in streams, going on hikes. They can they can walk a long way. Um, where, yeah, when we were at your guy's house, we yeah. did we did all of that stuff yeah, the other yeah, week, and yeah. that is like right up their alley. Just yeah. being in the outdoors, uncovering rocks, picking up picking up bugs. We got we went on the Father's Day camp out this last weekend, and 
they were in bogs looking for looking for frogs and Camden caught like a little garter snake. So we love doing all that stuff. Kind of kind of outdoorsy stuff. Outdoorsy. Um, okay. Road trips. We love road trips. Mm-hmm. That's fun too. That's great. Yeah. Uh, about ministry, let's let's talk a little bit about that. First of all, the most important ministry is the ministry to your home and your family. Uh, what's most important to you as you think of discipling your wife, discipling your kids? Mm. It really, it's just simple things like taking the time to do it. Just t- mm. taking the time to do something, and uh, we we try to to get regular time in the Word together as mm-hmm. a family, and mm-hmm. just just be working through something together. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's not even that, but it's it's getting together and having conversations, uh, talking about what's going on in life, um, big things that are coming up or big things that have happened. We've had a lot of that in the last year. Yeah. Um, so so really, it's that just just being engaged with one another and mm-hmm. and, and making sure that real like conversational relationship is is happening what is what is claire excited about in ministry at faith bible church she loves being a mom um so she loves spending time with other mums and their kids so so she's she's excited to be able to do that yeah with with ladies here she really finds joy in doing that she's always been um she's always been a woman who wants to invest in other women, yep. loves to spend time with other women, loves to disciple other women. Um, little known fact, the Jarms are famous for pizza, which is gonna die off since the new house doesn't have a brick oven. But we use Claire's pizza dough recipe. So probably the number one comment we'll get on this feed is, hey, can I get Claire's pizza dough recipe? <laughs> but Claire's pizza dough recipe is a winner and it's easy. And it's delicious. We have eaten many of those at our house. I imagine you delicious. Have. I imagine you have. Yeah. Uh, what are you looking forward to about ministry and youth ministry and the seminary? What What's What's your passion in Yeah, you in know, ministering. I, I love um, I love just bringing truth to people, help helping people to see and understand the truth, um, and then when when you do that. Um, it doesn't affect everybody the same, but you see the Holy Spirit working in people's lives. Mm. You see God working through that, and you see people's lives changed, mm. whether it's bringing the gospel to someone mm-hmm. um, and, and seeing someone get saved, or whether it's bringing, bringing God's word to someone that's already a believer and just mm-hmm. seeing how that shapes and changes their life. So I just, I just love doing that. I mm-hmm. love seeing it happen, seeing, mm-hmm. seeing God at work. That's good. We're excited to have you. Uh, in on that with our youth and youth families. Uh, what are some practical things that you're excited about coming up as you get involved with the ministry? Like what's your initial get to know the ministry game plan? Yeah, so we've got um, we've got welcome week coming up uh, for the upcoming students. We've got, um, we'll have some events over the summer uh, for the middle schoolers and the high schoolers, different, different things going on. We've got a retreat coming up for the young people. Um, we're working on uh, getting some things where we can get together with parents as well. Mm-hmm. So that's yet to uh, yet to kind of materialize, but we'll, we'll announce that as, as things are planned. So um, there, are, there are things in the pipeline. So. Yeah, and uh, one of the things not everybody may know if they don't have a middle schooler or a soon-to-be middle schooler, and that is we're, we're essentially starting a middle school branch of that, a junior high ministry, and we've got some different people. Paul Beausoleil is going to be helping you with that, and it's going to be teaching appropriate for the kids, a kind of a breakout. Everybody's been together junior high to high school for, mm, I don't know, seven to 10 years. It's, it's been quite a while. And now we're going to we're gonna see the, the middle school kids being able to have their own teaching a little more accessible for them. And it'll help the high school kids too. We're, we're excited about that and seeing how God will use different people investing in those lives. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's really good. Thanks Ian for giving us some time, us get to know you. And if you have more interesting questions for Ian, I'm sure he'd love to meet you. So when you see Ian and Claire in the foyer, in church, or you're, he's new to the ministry to you, but you're not new to the ministry, and you, you're bringing your kids every week, make sure you go and meet them and get to know them. They want to get to know you too. That'd be great. It's great to hear from Ian and his background and his story. Uh, We hope that you uh, introduce yourself to Ian and Claire, get to know them, their family, have their family over, their delightful family, 
And what we want to do right now is transition into our time of tribute to Jess Colvin. Jess uh, came on, on official staff just about the same time I did 18 years ago. Jess is uh, the, the ultimate servant-hearted person. Uh, if there is a need, Jess is stepping in to meet that. And then he is, uh, what we say, omni-capable. He's like irreplaceable. <laughs> Seriously. Whatever it, that needs to be figured out, he could figure it out. And uh, I mean, there's so many examples of a conversation that I'm having with elders about an idea and the next day, Jess comes back with the plan to implement it. Uh, he's he is he was the go-to guy if you needed to know anything about what was going on and how it went on and who did it at Faith Bible Church. Jess was going to know and be able to point you in a great direction. I think one of the things that is um, most impactful for me about uh, Jess is his compassion to help people. So for a number of years, we have something called the Care Fund. If a family has financial strife or dilemma. Um, If they're running short, Jess is often the liaison to help them. And he is always willing and and servant hearted to to help people think practically. He's he's taken on all kinds of of caring situations. So we're we're really gonna miss him. We're really thankful for his leadership and his his abilities here and we wish him great success and joy in the next endeavor in his life. For sure. I did, I did love working with Jess. Here he had a, a gift set that he understood everything. Uh, understood money, building maintenance, and scheduling, and people, and everything else. So I could go on forever. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, what better boss can you have? Probably the most humble man I know. Ordinary citizen Jess still serves people. So thanks, Jess. Jess, thank you so much for the years of teaching me as an admin, but even more so uh, the pleasure it's been to watch you parent your boys and to be both a friend to you and Renee and uh, also come alongside you as uh, your family and as a man hoping to grow and be more like you and your example. Thank you so much. I just wanted to thank you, Jess, for working with you. I worked with you back when you started in the day, and I remember bringing in Jake with me, and you were so gracious, and it was just a blessing to work with you then. And I love the opportunity that you got to come back and work with you again, even for just a couple years. I love your um, diligence and your graciousness and your humor, and we're going to miss you, even though we are going to still see you at church. But thank you for all your dedication to FBC and the people that work here. When I think of Jess, I think of servant leadership. He has a way of managing people where he encourages them and trusts them. He doesn't micromanage and yet he's willing to get into the details if you want him to and and really uh, serve in ways that don't seem like something that uh, you know the senior administrator should be serving he'll he'll dive into the details and you know put up signs on a wall if that's what he needs to do or stack chairs if that's what he needs to do um, he's willing to do whatever needs to be done and anyway I'm just so grateful for Um, having him as my boss. He's been the best boss ever. I'm going to miss seeing him around the office, but glad that I'll get to continue seeing him around the church. Jess was so patient uh, with me. He would always come to my desk and help me with whatever problem I had. And if my computer froze up, he could always fix it. There wasn't a problem that Jess couldn't fix. Um, And he will be greatly missed. Jess, we uh, hope that your new adventure um, will be as joyful as it was here. So when I think about Jess Colvin, I, I'm most thankful for the fact that he just, he loved to take care of people. He has taken care of me and my family. Uh, you know, when we moved out from North Carolina, we traveled across the country. From the very moment we got here, you know, he knew how to take care of us and took, take care of us well, make sure we were provided for. And he was just always there to make sure we had everything we needed. And he did that for everybody. I mean, he was just constantly serving people. Jess, I appreciate you. Um, You will always be my friend, and I love you, love your family. I'm very thankful for you. Jess has been one of the best team players I've ever worked with. He just is so great at owning the cause of what we're doing here at Faith Bible Church, and really, so he can help everyone do a better job of doing what they do and helping everyone to achieve the, the goal that we're pursuing together. 
So our goal really all along has been to make disciples of Jesus. And Jess, you've been such a great example of doing that personally, you and Renee, and you've also just been great at helping all of us think about how to be more effective in making disciples. So I really thank you for your love for uh, all of us on staff and for Faith Bible Church and all the heart and, and, and labor of love that you and Renee and your whole family put into us. So thank you. We love you and we're thankful for you. Hi, Jess. This is Walena. I will surely miss you, and I thank you so much for giving me the privilege of volunteering here at FBC. I hope you have great success in your new job. Congratulations. I remember when I started working at FBC, and Jess was so very patient with all of my many questions. He was a wealth of knowledge, and I am grateful for how well he shared his expertise with me over the last nine years. He created a workspace that was caring, fun, and a joy to be part of. Jess, you are irreplaceable, and we will miss your presence in the office very much. We will do our best to carry on the high standard you have set for us. May God bless this new adventure. We look forward to seeing you finally enjoy a Sunday morning sitting next to us. And when someone asks you the question, being able to say, I don't know, you'll have to ask someone else. Now it's time for our sermon preview, and uh, Dan Jarms is not preaching this week. It's Brian Sayers. Welcome to the studio, Brian. Thanks, Seth. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what we can expect this Sunday, and um, yeah, give us a little preview. Sure. It's a, it's a, an interesting and a stirring and a lengthy uh, section in the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 22, verses 47 through 62. And You're going all the way through 62, huh? All the way through 62. Wow. And, it's got a diverse um, group of situations going on there with Judas's kiss in the garden that betrays Jesus mm-hmm. and Peter's zealous pulling of the sword and, and cutting off of a servant's ear and Jesus' response to that. And then, of course, his arrest uh, itself and then Peter's denials right mm-hmm. after that. So diverse number of topics. Yeah. How are you going to tie it all together? Well... Uh, as I meditated on it and continued to, to study it, I realized, you know, the temptation is to zero in on Judas's apostasy and Peter's denials and and uh, uh, focus on how we can be unfaithful. But really, this this text is in that larger scope of what Dan referred to as the passion of the Christ, the suffering of the Christ. This mm, is mm-hmm. this passage is really revealing to us the heart of our merciful Savior. And as I went through that text, I, I saw there were a series of just weighty uh, situations that um, as, uh, as you think through what, what would have been going on in the heart and mind of Christ himself as he experienced these situations and what you see is a profound amount of mercy flowing out of the heart of Jesus, um, mm. even in his, his response to, to Judas, um, the way he responded to those who were arresting him, um, that I think a grievous glance that he gives Peter mm. after that third denial that yeah. inspires Peter to, to weep uncontrollably. Um, you yeah. really uh, see a merciful Savior. And so I've kind of tied it together as the burdens of our merciful Savior. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see how Jesus responds to these various situations. Um, And also the implications for us as Christians, uh, he bears our sorrow. He bears our shame. um, He pays the price for our betrayals. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what you see here as you watch him be merciful in these things and bear those burdens, we, we need to be reminded that every burden Christ bore uh, on the cross was for our benefit. And that's where the mercy comes in. He's mm. rescuing us from our miserable condition, our need to be forgiven of our own betrayals and denials, our need uh, to, 
to know that our faithful high priest uh, bears our sin and shame and sorrow. And so that's what I'm looking forward to unpacking for folks this weekend. Great. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be a sort of a weighty sermon, but but a good one to be reminded of of Christ bearing our burdens. Yeah. It's been it's been great to meditate on this week for sure. Great. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, great. Brian. Well, that wraps it up for Faith Matters today. And Seth, do you have some final things for us? Yeah, just a few uh, sort of admin details here. Um, I wanted to let you guys know that uh, you can subscribe to the podcast in any of your favorite podcasting apps. It's it's available in pretty much any of them that you can think of. Um, and if you subscribe and if you, if you rate and review the podcast in that podcasting app, that's actually really helpful for people being able to find the podcast easier. Um, when they go and search for Faith Matters, there's there's other podcasts called Faith Matters. We weren't that original, I guess. Aww. So if you want to see ours first, <laughs> rate and review it. <laughs> um, also, you know, again, it's a new podcast, so not a, not everyone at the church has heard about it yet. So share it on social media or send a link to your friend or whatever. Just get the help us get the word out because um, we want this to be a tool to help you know everyone in our church know what's going on and and be encouraged by you know the different the different uh, interviews and, and stories that we're going to be telling with that as as always we want to say if you have questions or feedback or things that you would like to see that's very helpful for us off, off our initial episode last week we got really helpful feedback here's some ideas that i would like to see us do and and uh, we're we're thinking about how to roll those in very cool um one last note next week i'm going to be on vacation so oh, there's not going to be an fantastic. episode um, I guess Dan could produce it by himself, but no, no, he doesn't want to do that. So I did that for a whole of COVID and <laughs> yeah, self, uh, self editing without any actual editing is a little difficult with, with no software. Yeah. yeah. No software editing is not fun. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.